Hey, I'm Jeff Straw. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, I've got three tips for you on how to find motivation in the face of slow growth, especially for musicians, artists, creatives, people like that. So let's get right into it after the intro. Prince said, sometimes it takes years for someone to become an overnight success. I also just realized I'm wearing purple while I talk about Prince. It was actually a coincidence, but anyways. <laughs> so this notion of overnight success, I think, is really uh, something that's pretty prevalent in the music industry. People seemingly come from nowhere and all of a sudden are thrust onto the national stage or the international stage. Overnight success is, is, is really a myth. And what it looks like in reality is... It's a series of small incremental wins that the musician or artist was prepared for when the time came. And so this notion of being ready for the opportunity when it arises is really a play, plays a big role. And so what seems like it might be taking a while for you to get your career going uh, might actually be some of the foundational work that you really need to be putting in. Those hours and hours of spent honing your craft, finding your sound, putting out releases to a seemingly flat audience without really getting much feedback in terms of fan base or in terms of editorial feedback, that's okay. You know, we have to prime this pump in order to get you ready to move to the next phase. Today, I've got three ideas to help you in how to find motivation as a creative. So the first big one for me is your support system. And that's gonna be, a two, this is a two-fold tip. The first, the first part of a support system is finding other like-minded creatives that are in your space that can support you and vice versa, you can support them. What I mean by that is you would be sending them work in progress tracks in order to get feedback on maybe your mix, maybe your arrangement, maybe your lyrics, whatever that looks like, your chord changes, your, your overall songwriting. Uh, and, uh, and on the same token, you're there for them. So they're sending you these same works in progress and you're giving them critical feedback and critical listening. And so it's very different than having a friend that just says, yeah, that sounds great, man. Woohoo, right? Like we all have some of those friends and there's nothing wrong with them, but you also need someone that's going to be able to help you grow and help you stay um, true to your art by giving you that constructive feedback. So that's, that's like who you find to put in that support system. But in, the, in terms of finding motivation, like those same people are very much going to be your partners in staying motivated, staying accountable, having deadlines that you meet for yourself as a producer, as an artist. And on the flip side, you will also be motivating for them. So it's a two-way street. Anytime you've got this support system, maybe it's just you and one other person. Perhaps it's a small group. You know, I wouldn't recommend it being a massive group. I think that those sort of get out of hand and they're good for other things, being a part of larger larger scale groups. But for, for this in particular, it's really good to have a sort of small trusted circle because they, they the other piece is people start to get to know you well enough to be able to call you out on your shit. And so if you're lagging and you're you're like running behind on your own deadlines, they're, they know you well enough to be able to, you know, out of love and out of respect for you say, hey, what happened to finishing that track by Friday, man? The other side of support system is, is having a coach or a mentor. B.B. King said, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. I love B.B. I find that to be true as well. Nothing really motivates me quite like learning, learning new things, especially when it comes with a level of accountability. A lot of the clients I work with say that one of their favorite things about working with me is not only the, the brand guidance that I'm able to give them and some of the design elements and the visual aesthetic that we're developing together, but it's the accountability layer that we put in place. By having regular calls and regular meetings, they know that they're going to be held accountable for, for their end of the bargain. So having a coach or mentor for you, and, and, and even though I'm a coach and a mentor, I have one myself, actually, I have a couple myself. And so I think you never outgrow the need to have mentors in your career and in your life, and it's just going to look and feel different at different points in your career. The second one is move. A lot of motivation comes from our bodies. Tony Robbins talks a lot about being in a peak state or a peak physical state in order to 
accomplish our best work and to really stay uh, motivated and be our, our be our best selves. And while I'm certainly no Tony Robbins, I have noticed that here in my own life, like if I'm active and I'm getting up more and I'm dancing around a little bit here in the studio to some good music, it will shift my energy, it will shift my motivation from, oh, I've got to do this thing to, hey, look at the cool thing I get to do now today for client. And your body will help you live into that mindset. The other piece is that it's really important to get outside of your work environment. Um, a lot of producers I know spend hours and hours and hours in the studio, and, and that's great. They're working on your craft, but you also need to know that it's important to get outside into the great wide world of ours, right? If you've got a dog, I mean, it's one of the best things about having a dog is it makes you get out of the house a few times a day. Um, but take a walk, go outside, go for a drive, just get outside of these same four walls that you're always looking at and, and that fresh perspective will be a massive boost in your motivation. You never know what small human interaction you might have outside uh, with someone or something that you'll see that will spark an idea and spark some creativity and, 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 and really get you juiced. Anytime you're feeling stuck, one of those two things is almost guaranteed to help. So get moving or get outside for a bit. The third tip is having a growth mindset. For years, I would tell my wife that I was going in the studio to go work on music. Oh, I gotta go work on some music. Oh, I'm gonna go work on music. And reframing that to say that I go get to, I'm gonna go create some music. I'm gonna go write some music. I'm gonna go play some music. That one word difference was a massive shift for me. And so it put me in a very different mindset around the creation side of music. And so again, it's, it's not this something that I have to do that I'm not looking forward to. It's very much a, um, a fulfilling part in and of itself, the creation side. And so if I'm motivated to go and play music, or I'm motivated to go um, create some photography edits or go create a video, it's a very different mindset than, oh, I gotta go work on some photos, right? And you can just, uh, you can just feel the difference between like the, the downtrodden mindset of, uh, of work around the creativity versus putting it in a, I get to go and enjoy this process. And so at, at that point, the journey and the process becomes fulfilling in and of itself. The other side of that coin is, is setting goals for myself and for you that are within my control. What do I mean by that? In other words, uh, I, I would have a goal on how many YouTube videos I'm going to make, not the number of people that will watch them. Because at the end of the day, I don't control how many people find and watch and enjoy my video. I have control over whether or not I make it and, and if I make it to the best of my ability. The same goes for songwriters, the same goes for painters, the same goes for authors. Like the control is is the amount of time I'm gonna spend on my creative process and the amount of output I'm going to make. Once it's out of my hands, like onto the socials and things like that, for me to put a goal on that seems a little bit counterproductive. And so I think that even the title of this video, how to stay motivated in the face of slow growth, like it's kind of its own answer, right? Like the growth will come over time. If I'm enjoying my process, if you're enjoying your process, that growth will come. It might not come as quickly as you think it will. It might take you know longer than you think it should. Um, but keep in mind that if you're enjoying the process, man, it really shouldn't matter. So I think that all of us, the more content we create in whatever creative outlet that is for you, the, the richer and deeper and better it gets. And as a result, as more people do begin to find it, they will find more richness in it. They will get more enjoyment out of it. Then they're more likely to share it with people that they know. And then that growth starts to happen organically. And it's usually when you finally take your eye off that daily look at number of plays or number of subscribers or whatever that looks like for you. And so I encourage you that this, this week and in the next coming weeks, go create, go create as much as you can. Hashtag create more, right? It's really something that I'm, I'm, I'm striving to live by and I would encourage you to do the same. Create more, enjoy the process. So thanks so much, I'm Jeff Straw. I appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me today. Do me a solid. If you like the video, please hit subscribe, share it with your friends. And with that, I'm out. I'll see you in the next video. 